Kwara State, where some detractors are twisting facts to perpetrate negative propaganda. There is a trending video on social media suggesting that an unruly crowd disrupted an event and booed the state governor, Abdurrahman Abdurazak, at the state polytechnic in Elorin this week. But after fact checking of the viral video by TVC News correspondents, uh, this is what he found out. The video instantly went viral on social media, becoming the talk of the town, at least in Kwara State. In the video, an event was disrupted while some political supporters were seen booing Malam Abdurrahman Abdurrazak. It was claimed that it happened at a recent event at the Kwara State Polytechnic in Loring. But contrary to the narratives of the purveyors of the video, Checks by TVC News show that the claims are false. Firstly, the event took place almost four years ago at the Emir's Palace in Lori when Malam Abdurrahman Abdurrazak was yet to be elected as a state governor. It was during the National Conference of the Lori Apex Social Cultural Body, the Lori Emirates Descendants Progressive Union, IEDPU, on the 25th of December 2018, and not during an event at the Kwara State Polytechnic has been erroneously claimed. Abdul Razak, as the then governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress in 2018, was to address the gathering when supporters of the then ruling People's Democratic Party shouted him down and the event was disrupted. That was the last time an event of such magnitude was disrupted by suspected political thugs and supporters in Kwara State. In the last three years of Abdurrazak's administration, the state has witnessed peaceful celebrations of festivals and events such as the Idol Prayers, the annual Ilori Emirate Doba, and IEDPU events. Therefore, the trending video is absolutely misleading. All right, uh, gentlemen, campaign has not even started yet. Elements like this are already creeping in. Now, what do you make of this video? And what do you think could have prompted at this manipulation? Do you... Well, I think we should expect more of this. Mm. But uh, there are some materials that politicians use. They don't know the far-reaching implication. Sometimes you set up a propaganda machine that turns out to be counterproductive. You don't know that you actually, um, you know, destroy yourself. Because Nigerians have a deep sense of history. And uh, it's not always good to underestimate the intelligence of the people. This event took place, I think, December 26, 2018, when PDP talks. That time, the current governor, was yet to be elected. You know, they arranged people to view him. Earlier, the Saraki dynasty had been subjected to all sort of uh, resentment, rebellion in the entire landscape. So in the following year, 2019, uh, the two contending parties were able to test their strength. And the Saraki dynasty lost all every elected position for the first time in over close mm -hmm. to 40 years yeah. of his sham grip on uh, Elori. And since that time, I think uh, it appears, you know, through the auto gear machinery and all that, they were able to remove them. But now that we are moving towards another election next year, I think this group, they are trying to use uh, all means, including illegitimate and dishonest, dishonest uh, mechanism to stake is a comeback. Um, but I think it's going to be very difficult because, because even though the video was being circulated by them, but along the line, people will sit back and say, ah, was there any event on, in August that the current governor was, was booed? booed? So uh, it was an attempt to underestimate us. But why I said this, it, it was counterproductive is that it also brings back memories, you know, of how that regime 
you know, assaulted dissenting views, how they were attacking people that were, that were opposed to them, and also how they demonstrated disrespect for the MI. That was in 2018, because that thing actually took place when the law in the Senate Progressive Union was having a meeting in Congress. So people are now trying to remind, you know, people are being reminded about the atrocities of that dynasty. That, that was the mistake they made. All right, Paul. Now, how much of this do we prepare our minds for? Because 2023 is not just an election. It is a very key election mm -hmm. in Nigeria. The truth of the matter is this kind of thing goes with the territory. Mm. It has happened before. It will continue to happen. And I think it is uh, people are trying to take advantage of the fact that majority of the folks, uh, I do not mean to insult them, mm -hmm. I use the social media too, majority, majority of the folks, or a very good percentage of those who use social media feel more than they think. Mm -hmm. You understand? There are not so many intelligent people on social media who can think deep, who, can, who have a sense of history and all of that. So politicians, we always capitalize okay. on that to bring all sorts of spurious uh, materials uh, to bring it to the fore. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, the one that um, was the, the, the president of Ghana purportedly said, you understand, is still fresh in our mind, and the man denied it. But again, I think, like what he said, is very counterproductive because you end up doing what? Demarketing your candidates. Mm -hmm. You end up demarketing your candidates. Because if you if you if you want you want to run your campaign on lies, you want to run your campaign on uh, on campaign of calumny. In the end, the people, the real voters, will not be fooled. For example, if the people of Quara think that this government has served them well, they will still give that party a second chance. Absolutely, you understand? They will not be. It's just, of course, people who pass this kind of material. They will have their time for a short time. People will shout, hey, 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 okay, this is what happened. The governor, the governor is booed. The, actual, the, 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 the idea is to give the sense that the party is unpopular. Mm. You understand? They will have their time. People will talk about it. But it's been rounded debunked. It's been fact-checked. Then those people who brought this material will end up looking shamed. You know, and already they are being shamed. All right, gentlemen. Now, the administration of Governor Abdul Razak has witnessed peace devoid of demonstrations seen in that video. Yeah. How do you think this can be addressed to avoid, uh, to avoid return to the old days? Like you already mentioned it, the way Ilori used to be. Well, if you see the Doba, for a very long time, they have not had a situation where the governor and the MI will be, you know, in the midst of the people. And you see sharing crowd, excited crowd. That has not happened for a very long time. I know a bit about Kora State, and I think there is a sense of ownership on the part of the people mm. of the governorship process now, compared to what we used to have you know, in yesteryears, where a dynasty you know, was in control of almost everything. In fact, the people could not breathe. But I think now, uh, people are talking about, for the first time, local communities are having a feel of what the government is doing. And it's a state I've lived before, mm -hmm. and I have a lot of people who are, you know, are still there. Yeah. You know, and I know a bit about the politics of Kuala State. I think, I'm not saying it's perfect, but I think there is relative peace, you know, in terms of political stability. You know, I'm not talking about threats of uh, kidnapping, that is everywhere. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, you know, meeting the aspirations of the people, in terms of, we are not associating with... Uh, you know, stealing of public funds. Mm. We are not talking about uh, bankruptcy associated mm -hmm. with the governor and his aides. So, and I think people are talking about reaching to rural areas for the first time. Mm. I think that is happening in Kuala I think that is a paradigm shift compared with what we have had in the past. All right, let's talk generally now. Outright propaganda, hate speeches, manipulated audios and videos that usually precede elections in Nigeria. Paul, how should we manage this issue? I think that um, we should go beyond all of this and start discussing issues. Issues. You know, because if you smear campaign, if, you, if, if at all you win election mm. or smear, smear campaign, uh, there's something they call uh, argumentum ad populum. Mm. You know, you try to just play up to s certain sentiments which are not uh, actually germane, you know. And let's, let's even assume you can get your candidates to win on that, to win on that. So does that mean that, would that translate to dividends of democracy for the people? 
I think the voters have a lot to do. They need to talk to themselves. And there are NGOs doing that. I know that they're mm. doing that. Have a lot to do. Talk to themselves. Let us run issues-based campaign. For example, I've, I said it on this program several, a, a number of times. Right. That uh, uh, Paul, quickly hold on, please. Let me take Shola Julius from Ibadan. Hello, Shola Julius. How are you, ma? Mr. Paul Dada and the other analysts in the house. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to you. Good evening. Now, yes, Mr. Paul, you are saying the right thing. We should, in 2023, it should be issue based campaign. And this fake news should be kept seen. Why? Because now, Nigerians, honestly, from a sincere mind, we need to ask questions and get those people that are honest and genuine in tackling one after the others, mm. the problems and the challenges of our country. Let us be frank with ourselves. Nigerians and Nigeria today is being faced by a number of challenges, and we need somebody that will be sincere and honest to tackle them. So All we right. need to come out to our politicians, and they need to be issue-based. All right, Not thank you very much, Elagilius. Or Berlin. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Now, Paul, let me have your final take. Yeah, so I was actually talking about the, the candidates. We should be asking them what is their idea. Mm -hmm. For example, to solve Nigeria's greatest problem, security. What are you going to do differently? Those are the questions. And we should be taking decisions on the answers they give to us. For insecurity has, has defied, almost defied solution in Nigeria, despite government's best efforts. So what are these candidates going to do differently? on security, on the economy, on education. Those are the questions we should be asking. Not that somebody somewhere is being booed or somebody, so one president, so one president of a country is telling, is saying, uh, is telling a candidate to drop. No, we don't need those lies. We don't need to smear people. We don't need to uh, go into, again, argument about dominion. That is character assassination. Mm. We should deal with the issues. Should deal with the issues. All right, Mr. Adwale, let me have your final take. Yeah, absolutely, we need but to. But bearing in mind that Nigerians do not really ask questions, there, are the lo there is a lot of conspiracy silence in Nigeria. No, Nigerians are very critical people. Mm. That is why the media should set the agenda, you know, to uh, aggregate the views of uh, our people so that the issue should be what can the candidate bring to the table, not just about, you know, talking about, you know, insulting ourselves and all that. We should. Look at fundamental issues that affect our well-being. All right, then. I hope we do.